thank you. I hope you had a good lunch and have enjoyed the first half of the day. Um, we have a very interesting, exciting session after lunch, which is all about trying to connect the dots between the different subnational and national initiatives that many of us are part of and involved in in different ways. Um, they had a, uh, a breakout session actually before lunch to have a chat. I think the first, maybe the first meeting between them kind of formally to talk about how to connect the dots. But we're going to hear from each of them briefly, four to five minutes each, about what they're doing, their objectives, and so on. Um, and then we will have some time to, to, to take questions and to explore um, how collaboration can be accelerated. Um, I'm going to go down the list um, alphabetically by, by initiative, so starting with Dublin. And you can either, I'm going to stand here, because apparently there's no chair can't fit or something. So are you happy to sit and do that? I'm delighted to sit, thank you. Right. So uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, thank you very much for having for, for Ireland here. We're del delighted to participate in, in such a, a panel as this. Um, and so from the respect of Ireland, a number of years ago, the state, our former prime minister, was very interested in this agenda and had a look at the agenda and said, what could Ireland do in this area around our own International Financial Services Centre, which is, is, is back thriving again after recent challenges, uh, as is our domestic financial services centre. So, we had a cabinet memo cleared by a prime minister and cabinet to say, let's look at the whole area of green finance. We were slightly ahead of the curve. And then, as I said earlier on, there wasn't even a curve around green finance. People still saw it in, in large institutions that we were dealing with as corporate social responsibility. So during the recession, the focus that we wanted wasn't put on this agenda as much as we, we wanted. And the real trigger for us getting our act together in the last few years was obviously COP21 uh, and actually seeing the extent of what the financial institutions were doing in this space. So what government did, uh, and our Prime Minister and the team, was that they merged two entities in Ireland, one called the Green International Financial Services Centre, and one called the Greenway, which is focused on clean tech innovation, to create Sustainable Nation Ireland, which is what I head up. Sustainable Nation Ireland is a public-private backed initiative, uh, private sector initiative, which is looking to promote and position Ireland as a, a leading hub for sustainable finance, sustainable innovation, sustainable skills. So. That's a way, it's co-funded by the public and private sector, and we have a small team around 10 people. And with regard to this agenda today, we have three to four different initiatives under the Green, fi Green and Sustainable Finance banner. One, as mandated by our Department of Finance, we have a committee called the Finance Green Committee, which is chaired by the former President of the European Parliament, Pat Cox. And that committee's role is twofold. One is to promote Ireland as a, as a hub, an international hub for green finance. So we've got around 40 billion of green capital in play in Ireland at the moment, so it's, it's a lot in an Irish context, across green bonds, across funds, and across asset management. And if I could just stay with that point for a moment, Ireland historically has not been an asset management hub, it's been more middle and back office, but what you had in the last 15 years in Ireland is you had a bunch of wind and solar developers that actually were very good at what they were doing, and were developing projects in Ireland and all over the world, and they've actually morphed into asset managers now. And so there's a whole cluster of, of green asset managers in Ireland. The second part of the Finance Green Committee is actually to mobilize capital towards Ireland's national decarbonisation efforts. So it's really linking the capital system to the real economy. That's what we're trying to do in Ireland. The state itself needs to invest 100, sorry, Ireland needs to invest 120 billion over the next decades in our national decarbonisation. We worked with the state a few, uh, for a while, and the last few weeks, the state have announced the first 22 billion that they're going to invest in this plan, and it's about crowding in the private sector capital. The second part to our Green and Sustainable Finance uh, initiative is we've now set up our own Sustainable and Responsible Investment Forum, SIF Ireland, which is focused on ESG. And one of the first things we're doing there is recognizing that the Irish domestic capital market participants, such as the asset owners, are quite far behind on the ESG agenda versus other European jurisdictions. We've partnered with the UNPRI, and I'm delighted to say we're now doing a, a fiduciary roadmap exercise for 21st century for Ireland, and that kicked off a few weeks ago. So we're really pleased that the UNPRI have supported of that. The third part to the leg of green and sustainable finance with the public private sector initiative out of Ireland is focused on fintech, blockchain, and we're delighted that actually we're supported by the EU's Climate Kick initiative uh, platform in doing that. And what we run in Ireland, we represent Climate Kick in Ireland, we're running an accelerator focused on green, on fin, uh, green fintech. So by the end of the summer, with the support of Climate Kick, we'll have given out around 600,000 euros in grants to X number of companies, startups in the space that are trying to accelerate their initiative in green fintech. And then the fourth and final piece to the Irish uh, green finance play is skills. Is we recognize that about domestic and international 
financial services side, there's a lot of good skills in Ireland. And how do we now upskill them in the area of sustainable finance? So the government have given us a, a large amount of capital to work with institutions in Ireland, which are private sector, to co-fund them as they go to develop programs to upskill their staff. So in summary, we started this a number of years ago. It didn't go quite as well as we wanted to for various different reasons. We revisited it a number of years ago. We've got the Prime Minister and Cabinet support to position Promote Ireland as a green finance hub, but recognising the link of the capital to the real economy. And then also the reason why we're here today and thrilled to be, to be invited and included is we recognise as a very small country, in order for us to meet our own needs, we must collaborate with other institutions and learn from other centres such as London, such as Zurich, such as Frankfurt, best practice that we can bring back to Ireland and hopefully those guys can learn as well. So thank you very much for including us today and I hope that's a good snapshot of what we're doing in Ireland. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. A, um, <coughs> a, a, a scarily impressive benchmark, actually, for, for the people to follow. You're doing an awful lot. Um, uh, Germany have two representatives. Frank is going oh, first, yeah. I think. So over to you. Whatever. Okay. So thank you very much. I'm also delighted um, to, to be here. Um, yes, and I share the impression that, <coughs> so, uh, that, that there are lots of things happening in Ireland. So the, the initiative uh, within Germany, I'm going to talk about is the uh, Frankfurt, the Green Finance Cluster Frankfurt. It's a fairly young initiative. We started last year, basically. And despite the fact that, you know, discussion was pretty clear. So I, I, should, I should maybe start by, you know, who has initiated that? Where did the initiative come from? And that was actually from a discussion between the Ministry of the State of Hessen and at board level, the financial, the larger financial institutions in, uh, in Frankfurt. So interestingly, perhaps as, as a side remark, the, the Ministry of the State of Hessen is the ministry responsible for regulating the financial sector, the financial center of Frankfurt. That's why also the initiative came there. But lots of the discussion were actually you know, driven um, and also inspired at the board level by the financial institutions. And it was pretty clear that there was some, you know, <clears throat> some dynamics there and the clear will to, to move forward, which I think is quite important to have this commitment at the board level because you know, that is what you need when you really want to look at not just a sort of a niche, but bring this into the larger, in, into the larger perspective. Now, um, there was also discussion on, you know, how, where, where should the focus be, uh, you know, despite the fact that this was, you know, sort of set up as a, a place um, where knowledge and discussions should emerge between the larger financing, uh, financial institutions and, you know, and, and potentially also other institutions, uh, also the, 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 the ministry. Um, that the topic itself is, of course, of the, the big topic of relevance is sustainability, while the deliberate discussion was to focus this cluster on green finance, because you know, it's probably a first concrete you know, part of the sustainable issue to where we can, where we can move forward, where we can start doing stuff. And, and that is also how it is set up. Um, so we'll focus on those issues, on green finance issues uh, uh, at the beginning. Um, and you know, this will, of course, and at, at the beginning, we'll have some, some kind of a, um, a benchmarking issue, so looking at the, uh, the best practice or the practices as such that we find, how does it compare internationally, how do specifics of the, you know, the different markets feed into that. Uh, many of you might know that the German um, market is less, less, uh, less capital market-driven, a more banking system. There's uh, some peculiarities of the banking system in Germany, and there's also some peculiarities of the, of the German economy, which, which might play a role, but might also be of relevance to others. So that is something, and this is also um, one reason why we're quite honored as, as Frankfurt School, so I'm, I'm uh, actually from Frankfurt School, to host the secretariat of that Green Finance Cluster, Frankfurt. So at Frankfurt School, we have a, a, a collaborative, UNEP collaborating center for climate and sustainable energy finance, where between 20 and 30 people are working in a broader sense on this on an academic Level, so we also have questions to ask and, and are happy to address specific questions and drive the discussions forward. So on top of that, it's not just you know looking at benchmarking. Um, the institutions who are actually financially supporting this center also have an interest to address specific questions, and, and they are sort of driving the agenda in terms of research and looking at stuff of this, uh, looking at specific questions of this uh, um, green finance cluster. So. Um, Goethe University at Frankfurt is also involved to some extent, and we, we can jointly with the institutions, that's the, you know, that's the plan, look at specific issues and drive understanding forward 
and also provides some kind of protected space where institutions can exchange about the, the trade-offs that will be there. To be honest, you know, it's not all just always a one-way street, but there will be, from the perspective of institutions, some challenges and trade-offs, and these also need to be you know, discussed in some way and addressed um, in order to move things forward. So I think you know, I should um, leave it at that. We're, we're quite you know, looking forward to the future and especially um, thrilled by how inspiration about the questions is coming from the financial institutions themselves. Thank you. So over to Karina, who's going to speak about the, um, the Hub for Sustainable Finance, Germany. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, maybe first uh, a bit uh, to our Accelerating Sustainable Finance Initiative. An uh, initiative Deutsche Börse Group uh, founded or initiated um, in spring last year um, because of two reasons. Uh, the one reason is the German uh, sustainability strategy gets reviewed every four or five years by an international expert group and the um, financial industry was characterized as underdeveloped uh, in the field of sustainability um, and guiding uh, the uh, sustainability strategy in Germany. Um, I think uh, in the last peer review report in the end of 2013. And uh, the other thing is as stock exchange we have the public mission to provide safe, stable, and fair markets. And uh, we do feel that we cannot fulfill this mission any longer without having an eye on the extra financial aspects um, in the market. So two good reasons for us to ask us, okay, what can we do to accelerate sustainable finance in Germany? And so we initi uh, initiated accelerating sustainable finance, uh, the Accelerating Sustainable Finance Initiative coming out of the financial industry in Frankfurt. Um, and focusing on three main topics. One task force is discussing um, everything around sustainable products and services within our markets, what is already there, what should be developed, and how can we do this. The second task force is focusing on ESG data, the database for sustainable investment, um, in combination with questions around about uh, blockchain, digitalization, etc., artificial intelligence. Um, you know that stuff. The third task force is dealing with um, future-proof investment strategies like impact investing and financial inclusion. Um, that is the industry side in the heart of Frankfurt, closely connected with the Korean finance cluster. And um, of course, it's, it's absolutely important to get the regulators, the um, civil society, and the government uh, on our side to bring something forward or to move the case of sustainable finance. That is why we um, implemented the so-called Hub for Sustainable Finance Germany together with the Council for Sustainability in Berlin. Um, that we have a kind of institutionalized um, permanent dialogue between regulators, the financial industry, the listed companies, civil society and the government um, to get a kind of common understanding and how far sustainable finance um, is important to develop um, our own economic system and to play a responsible role within the European dialogue <coughs> concerning Europe, um, sustainable finance and uh, the way we move, uh, want to move forward together. Um, yeah. And uh, so I think we, have, we are on a good way in Germany to come to this common voice to get our own understanding of sustainable finance and the needs and interests in our markets but beside that, being a responsible partner for the other um, European member states in developing sustainable finance in the whole of Europe. Great, thank you. Um, so, from Germany to Italy. Do you have a slide? Uh, yeah, if you want to use your slides, they should be, should be there. Here they are. So, uh, the Italian Sustainable Finance Initiative is uh, actually uh, led by um, led by the government, so there's ministerial uh, lead there, which you might think now, it's, it's a sort of liability in the light of, uh, of the outcomes of, uh, of the general election, but actually uh, it's been in the making for um, a number of years, and uh, despite changes um, in the government, there's strong leadership at, at the <coughs> departmental level, and uh, this guarantees uh, continuity and, and uh, and stability. 
uh, the first step to the creation of, of the um, sustainable uh, finance initiative in Italy was uh, the launch in 2016 of a national dialogue of sustainable finance, which was uh, facilitated by, uh, by UNEP inquiry that involved, uh, apart from uh, uh, the Ministry of the Environment, the Ministry of Finance, and the Ministry of the Economic Development, all the industry around 50 organizations. Uh, and uh, uh, the result of this uh, engagement was uh, a report, uh, Finance, Finance of the Future, where 18 recommendations were set out, and uh, one of those was uh, the creation of a, uh, a sustainable uh, financial center. Um, in 2017, this work was carried forward uh, uh, within the context of the Italian presidency of the G7, and the same uh, Ministry of, of the Environment managed to embed uh, two uh, green finance work, stream, work streams within um, the preparatory work of the uh, G7 ministerial meeting. One was a, on uh, a green financial uh, center network, and the second one was on green finance uh, for SMEs, because it's a very um, important area for, for Italy, considering the makeup of its um, uh, in this industrial, uh, industrial development. And uh, uh, as a result of that, in the uh, final communique of the um, environmental ministers in Bologna, there was a recommendation uh, on uh, endorsing a network of green financial centers. And uh, the, um, a meeting of these green financial centers will be hosted in Milan in April to fulfill uh, that, um, that commitment. And uh, this year, in, uh, in, in January, uh, uh, um, an Italian observatory, a national observatory on sustainable finance was set up uh, officially as part of the, through a, a ministerial uh, decree. So it's really part of the, now of the Italian bureaucracy, this, uh, this observatory on, on sustainable finance. And um, uh, apart from the work on, um, on the sustainable finance, um, initiative. It also focuses on uh, green reindustrialization. Re so the idea that uh, the uh, green financial sector can bring um, manufacturing back to uh, to Italy. And the second area is prudential risks um, through the work of the um, Bank of Italy and the Insurance Association around um, climate uh, climate resilience. Uh, what is, uh, I'm co-chairing uh, uh, the, the, the working group that is going to launch uh, in April uh, in Milan uh, on the occasion of this uh, meeting of the uh, Green Financial Sector, the Italian Sustainable Financial Initiative. And uh, uh, we have decided uh, that uh, we, our focus will be uh, especially on financial innovation and uh, uh, the creation of, uh, uh, let's say, market infrastructure initiative, initiatives. The, um, probably the, given uh, our uh, approach to uh, the, uh, the climate transition, the focus will be mainly on finding energy efficiency. So there's, a lot, there's interest within the working group around uh, creation of mechanism for the aggregation of demand of, uh, uh, of green funding and uh, uh, especially for uh, the, the, the retrofitting and also for the funding of, uh, of utilities like water utilities or anything that is more uh, around a social, <coughs> social infrastructure. <coughs> um, of course, our, our initiative will be different uh, from, any, from any other initiative because of the uh, key features of, uh, of the Italian economy. So, uh, economy driven by, by SMEs, uh, funding driven by uh, bank uh, lending with the uh, financial markets just playing uh, uh, a tiny role. Um, we've seen already some uh, market driven uh, step forward uh, in terms of lending to renewable energy, 
adoption of the um, responsible uh, insurance principles and uh, the creation of also uh, a green bond segment and other, um, let's say, uh, the prevalence in the small market, especially of uh, green, uh, of green companies. So, based on this, uh, starting from uh, from the next month, the new. Uh, Italian Sustainable Initiative will start developing uh, an action plan. Great, thank you. Um, so, Alison, you're on home turf. Over yes, to you. indeed. Thank, thank you very much, Ben. I'm absolutely delighted to be able to represent London here in, you know, in the very heart of the financial global city that is the City of London, and the Guildhall here, which is the home of the Corporation of London, which is the local authority for London. And I'm one of the elected members, and we've been driving through. Um, an initiative called, we call it the Green Finance Initiative, um, and I want to tell you a little bit about that. I mean, the City of London has been concerned with the Green Finance Agenda for some time. In particular, in 2013, we hosted the Government's Environmental Audit Select Committee in this very room, in which they launched a Green Finance Inquiry. And that's been followed up by another Green Finance Inquiry by the same committee, which hasn't yet reported. But it's interesting that the... Um, the, the, the four-year gap between the two will be, will be interesting to see how, in the government's eyes at least, the whole green finance sphere has developed, we hope, and I'm sure it has. The city then, in 2016, set up the Green Finance Initiative, of which I'm the vice chair. And the aim of this is to provide market leadership on green finance and to promote London's world-class financial and professional services, not surprisingly. And what's interesting about the partnership is that it's very much based across the piece. It's got public and private sectors, and we have leading financial institutions, NGOs, professional services departments, and businesses, as well as academics. And our members and contributors include the London Stock Exchange, I know there are people here, HSBC, ICMA, BlackRock, Barclays, the Green Investment Group, as well as Aviva, JP Morgan, and the Bank of England and many other professional services firms. The City of the London Corporation and the GFI are working very, very closely with government. As we've heard from other speakers, it's really important, I think, that the government of any nation needs to be involved in driving this through because of their own political uh, drivers. And Treasury and the Department for Business, Industry, uh, Energy and Industry Strategy have been very key to bringing that group together and ensuring that what we as a group say is fed back to government and then creates policies in its own right. We have a very exciting work plan and the next major thing that's going to happen is we have a Green Finance Summit which is in the Guildhall here on the 17th July. A little bit of a plug there, Ben, I hope you don't mind. Um, if you are interested in attending, go on to the Green Finance Initiative website. Um, the theme of that conference is mainstreaming green finance. And we're particularly concerned to follow up the areas that we've been focusing on over the last year or so. That includes things like data and risk, ensuring the green principles are well-defined and accountable, building up the international contacts, as we are today, and assisting in the creation of objective international accounting standards, all of that helping, in the case of the UK, to meet our climate change uh, policy commitments. There are other major um, policy groups within the UK. We have um, the government's own Green Finance Task Force and also the um, Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosures, uh, which I expect you've heard about today. But both of them are complementary. We make sure we're not treading on each other's toes. There's a lot of complementary membership across the groups so that we make sure we're working together to the best effect. And obviously, because of our international nature, London has also been driving very much international relationships, and we're particularly promoting partnerships and bilateral economic dialogue at the moment, largely with China and with Brazil and with Mexico. And all of these are shaping up into important policies and also are creating themselves trilateral and quadrilateral relationships. So I'm very excited by this partnership here. Um, it's important that we work together and perhaps I can just add a personal note um, that, in fact, I'm very interested in the very ancient Hanseatic links that this part of Northern Europe had driven from the German uh, merchants who came out. And the 
English, uh, the, the London home of this uh, trading partnership in the Middle Ages was on the bank of the River Thames underneath Cannon Street Station. And that is the area that I represent now as the alderman. And we even have a, a walkway on the river called the Hanseatic Walk. And that has led to a very close relationship with Hamburg, who have kept up the, the, the bilateral agreement and arrangements. I go there every year and have linked in with other um, Hanseatic cities on the basis of that. So it's very interesting how this ancient linkage of an area and a, a geographical location can bring people together again. So I'm very delighted to be here, really exciting at the initiative. I'm sure many strands of work will come out. We've already had the, the meeting earlier today, and I hope it's something that we can all be proud that we've handed on for the future generations. So thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. Um, and uh, I particularly, like, particularly like that thought of these ancient relationships being repurposed for a modern <laughs> age. Um, so thank you for that. Tom Luxembourg. Thank you, thank you very much uh, for, for inviting us here. Um, uh, as you may have seen from the program, I'm a little bit the odd one out in the round in the sense that uh, the agency I represent neither has sustainable nor green in the, in the title. Um, so Luxembourg for Finance is a private-public partnership between the Luxembourg government and the financial industry in Luxembourg. Um, and uh, we, our role is to help develop the Luxembourg Financial Centre and sustainable finance is one part of that. But we're also a member of the uh, Luxembourg Climate Finance Task Force. And I, I will come back to that. But um, just to put sustainable finance in, in, uh, in the context uh, in Luxembourg, uh, in fact, the context is, is the, the, the financial centre. Um, we have, uh, uh, contrary to, to most uh, representatives here, maybe with the exception of Ireland, uh, a relatively small uh, domestic market, needless to say. But we have a, a, an important financial centre in the sense that we act as a platform uh, connecting uh, investors, uh, issuers, uh, uh, and investments uh, 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 across the world. So we're not necessarily home to the asset managers nor the issuers, but we're, we're home to, let's say, the, the, the platform that connects them. Um, we also um, uh, have been active in sustainable finance for quite some time. So Luxembourg initially started uh, focusing uh, with initial, initial focus in, in, in microfinance, uh, uh, um, uh, knowledge transfer and capacity building. Um, but uh, uh, that, that in 2006, uh, Luxembourg launched a, a LuxFlag, which is a fund labeling agency, which initially focused on, on, on granting labels uh, for microfinance funds. Uh, this has grown to, to other labels, but uh, today 50% uh, of assets, global microfinance assets, are labeled by, uh, by LuxFlag. So this, this is the, let's say that was the initial, the, the initial um, uh, where we came from. Um, for, for, for Luxembourg, it was very clear that if we really want to make a footprint in sustainable finance, we have uh, the financial centre is the means to do it. Uh, and and uh, as, you, as you may know, Luxembourg is the largest fund centre in Europe, uh, 4.4 4 trillion uh, euros of assets under management, and, uh, and, and also in terms of uh, responsible investment funds, it represents one in three, it's the domicile of one in three responsible investments and two in three impact funds in Europe. So this was clearly for us the, la the lever that we need, that, that, that we need uh, to use. And then on the other hand, there's also the Luxembourg Stock Exchange, which acts as one of the leading debt securities listing uh, centers and was also the place where the European Investment Bank listed its first, or the world's first uh, uh, green bond, uh, the climate awareness bond, a little bit more than 10 years ago now. Uh, so out of that, we, uh, in 2015, uh, uh, the Luxembourg Ministry of Finance and the Luxembourg Ministry for Environment and Sustainable Development decided to set up a dedicated climate finance task force, so leading up to, to uh, COP21, uh, with the idea of bringing together the pub public stakeholders and the financial uh, uh, sector to identify uh, um, uh, areas or initiatives that Luxembourg could develop to uh, provide added value uh, as, as a financial center uh, or at, a, at an international scale. Um, out of that, the several initiatives have come out in the meantime. Uh, in 2016, the Luxembourg Stock Exchange launched the Luxembourg Green Exchange, so actually the world's first platform exclusively dedicated to uh, uh, green securities, which uh, um, uh, set, uh, uh, made, made uh, um, uh, industry best practices and standards a mandatory requirement to be listed on the platform, but also re uh, demanded uh, uh, pre- and post-issuance uh, 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 reporting. Um, it lists actually, it was quite successful because it lists 50% uh, of the world's uh, listed green bonds are now listed on this, on this platform. 
uh, which now has expanded to two other platforms, one for social bonds and one uh, for sustainable bonds <coughs> as well. The stock exchange has also created several links with, uh, with, with its Chinese counterparts, uh, launching uh, index series, uh, green bond index series with the Shenzhen and the uh, Shanghai Stock Exchange, and has also um, uh, launched a, uh, a green bond channel with, with the uh, Shanghai Stock Exchange to, uh, to allow uh, stock exchange listed in Shanghai to be, to be displayed on the LGX as well. Um, Luxflag, that I mentioned before, introduced a climate finance label uh, in 2016 for investment funds uh, on top of the microfinance and ESG and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, environmental label it had before. And then the Luxembourg government uh, entered a uh, strategic partnership with the European Investment Bank to uh, um, invest in climate finance uh, 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 projects uh, to essentially cover first loss uh, tranches to on, uh, and encourage the onboarding or the, the, the scaling up uh, through uh, by, uh, with, uh, via private investments and also with the uh, World Bank, the IFC, um, to host the, um, uh, the Green Bond Cornerstone, uh, uh, the Green Bond Cornerstone Fund, uh, which, which you, you're probably aware of. Um, finally, uh, just uh, last month, the, uh, an, another initiative was launched or elect, uh, launched its uh, request for uh, participation, uh, which is a, a, a climate finance accelerator. Because one, one of the gaps that we identified is that you have a lot of asset managers that have uh, a lot of uh, know-how and very savvy on the climate side and on the project side, but may not necessarily have the, let's say, the, the, the experience, essentially startups, to launch funds, set funds up, and also raise finance. So the idea is this is really like an accelerator. These, these funds get, these asset managers get uh, um, uh, get support in, in setting up their funds and, and raising finance, and the first cohort will be onboarded in, in May. Um, and then um, to conclude, we uh, now have just started a similar process to what uh, Italy has done with UNEP in, do, in, in road mapping, uh, establishing a roadmap for uh, Luxembourg to, to make the Luxembourg Financial Center uh, more sustainable and identify gaps that, 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 uh, that need to be addressed, and also, which obviously will also already uh, um, uh, consider the various uh, uh, HLAC recommendations uh, to, to try and uh, integrate them as already as much as possible. And then I would like to plug one thing as well. We have a, we will launch our first uh, sustainable uh, finance forum on the 31st of May, to which you're obviously all invited as well. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, Tom. Um, so we're now going to hear from Stockholm. Yes, thank you. We're also extremely pleased to be here today uh, and on this panel right now. Um, representing myself, the, the Stockholm uh, Sustainable Finance Center, which is actually relatively young uh, compared to some of the centers here. Uh, it was launched last year in November uh, by the Swedish government uh, and the Stockholm Environment Institute and the Stockholm School of Economics. Uh, so it's, of course, a non non-profit initiative, um, as I said, m primarily funded from the government, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Energy and Environment. I think is a good mix of ministries to get this uh, task tackled. Um, as you heard from the panels this morning, I mean, there's already quite a bit of activity going on in Sweden when it comes to sustainable finance. Um, the, the banking sector has been active in the green bonds from the very inception. Um, several issuers at the corporate level and public level, the AP funds, so our pension funds, have been quite at the forefront of decarbonizing or embedding ESG and, and this thing. I can, I can do a bit of Swedish bragging because I'm not Swedish myself, so I think that's allowed. Um, but, but nevertheless, even though all of these activities are, are, are going on in Sweden, there's still the recognition that actually when you look at the targets that we set in 2015 in terms of SDGs and, and, and Paris and climate, you know, we're actually not very close to what we ought to be doing. There's still a massive gap, hence this, this, this initiative in this center to try and speed this, this up, uh, really, and try to accelerate, push for the next uh, wave, you know, beyond green bonds, great instrument, what's next, what kind of other innovations do we need to really get to the pace uh, that we need to have in order to deliver on the SDGs and, and, and on Paris. Uh, as I said, we're pretty young, so we're still really uh, scoping out the work streams and what we're actually going to do. Uh, but, but I think there are two characteristics that stand out. Uh, one, we're going to work quite a bit strongly on impact and the link between finance and the real economy. 
Uh, so this is not, you know, sustainable finance for us. It's not about necessarily tracking the green bonds, how many green bonds you've issued and so on, but it's more tracking the impact in the real economy. How much CO2 are you not emitting or how much biodiversity are you keeping? And that's, that link is what is crucial, important, and needs to be done in a transparent, cost-effective uh, way. And, and I think there, a lot of innovation still needs to happen, and, and we'll focus that. That's one element, that's one characteristic. The other characteristic, which I haven't heard a lot throughout the day, actually, is the recognition that, you know, we, we can't, of course, we're going to focus on the Swedish market and European uh, and, and, and so on, but also the emerging economies are, are critical here. Uh, so we are going to try and, and work from that angle as well uh, and engage with, with emerging markets, um, and I'll share now some thoughts around that uh, and how we can get them on board the sustainable finance uh, journey. Um, the way we are structured to try and deliver this is, you know, broadly speaking, in, in three uh, pillars. Uh, we have research and innovation, uh, where, again, we are going to push uh, new projects. We are collaborating with the Stockholm Green Digital Finance, which you've heard this morning uh, for, in terms of fintech innovation, uh, but also other things. And we are also starting to discuss uh, one of the topics that we, was mentioned this morning, this short-termism uh, issue. Uh, so working with, with, um, with the financial players in, in the Stockholm area to really understand where basically, where do you lose the long-term perspective. Somewhere in, in, in how you do the math, you, you, you lose that perspective and where is it lost and how can we not lose it, uh, basically. The second pillar is around education and capacity building. Uh, that's where the Stockholm School of Economics steps up in their uh, partnership. Um, and there, again, we try to be quite concrete, so we are shaping uh, both a two days kind of quick course uh, and a longer 10 days program, uh, executive program uh, for financial players. And again, that's where there is also a link to the emerging economies. We're in conversations with the IFC and World Bank to provide this sort of uh, service in terms of education and, and, and knowledge sharing also towards emerging economies. Uh, so India, Brazil, uh, Mexico, South Africa, this, this type of target group. Um, and then the last pillar, of course, around engagement and, and, and outreach. We can't do anything without engaging, uh, of course, and we want to speak up, uh, be present internationally, show uh, Stockholm and the Swedish experience and expertise, and hopefully the innovations that we can test uh, in, in Sweden, and then uh, showcase them and, and, and potentially uh, collaborate on that. I think we've had, I've heard some conversations about competition and collaboration. Um, to be honest, from our perspective, I think sustainable finance, we can all agree, is sufficiently niche still that I think we can collaborate without having to worry too much about competing for a few years. Hopefully, I wish we could be really, you know, as soon as we start really competing for this, I think that's a good signal. I think we are getting there. Um, so, so in that sense and with, with that, uh, from that perspective, I really welcome these kind of panels, the discussions and the breakouts that we've had in terms of getting the various, various centers to collaborate and maybe pick a few of the bottlenecks and help each other to unlock them. Great. Thank you, Luca. Switzerland. I also brought a few slides, so maybe you could show could somebody them Somebody pass us. down the ticket. We set Swiss Sustainable Finance up in 2014, so we've been around for roughly three years. And we were founded with the vision of making Switzerland the leading center in sustainable finance with two objectives, both uh, having growth or fostering growth opportunities, but of course also having a benefit for the society at large. How do we want to achieve this goal? Mainly through informing, educating and catalyzing growth, which brings us to our strategic activities. In knowledge management, we focus around information through events and publications. We are currently uh, on the move in getting the Swiss market study uh, uh, set up. We uh, try to facilitate sustainable finance education, both through own tools. We will publish a, an online training module in Q2, uh, which is uh, which will be available for everyone around in this market. But we also cooperate with our Federal Office for the Environment in a research project on how to actually get sustainability into 
uh, regular finance education, something I, I think which is still lacking a bit. In service development, we have different technical work groups. Relationship building is, of course, a natural element of uh, such an industry uh, association. And last but not least, market development. There we mainly focus on institutional asset owners. In Switzerland, we face the challenge that our pension funds are not as far as ahead as some of the examples we had on panels this morning. So we try to work with pension funds to really bring them forward in this subject. Just to give you an overview on the, on the kind of membership we have, we're a purely membership uh, financed association. It ranges from banks to asset managers, uh, a lot of asset owners as well, service providers, but we also have network partners from the public sector and very importantly from universities and business schools with which we also have different projects ongoing. Other uh, non-profits are, for example, the Swiss Insurance Association. So there again, we try to take up uh, know-how from our members and offer it to other asset owners uh, associations to bring the topic forward. We came up with quite some publications since we set the association up. I would like to highlight the last one, the Handbook on Sustainable Investments that we co-published uh, with the CFA Research Foundation. And I think it's quite a useful tool for pension funds, for insurance companies that haven't yet started the journey. Uh, you can download it online on the website or even order a copy. To the left, you see a survey that we did to uh, find out what, what was the progress in Switzerland on the roadmap report that we also did jointly with the UNEP inquiry. So we were involved in the national report and now try to bring the different objectives forward. Um, events are always useful. We try to cooperate with different institutions, for example, with CFA, but also with PRI or UNEP-FI in setting up international events. But then again, we have a lot of local events with players such as the Swiss uh, uh, Fund and Asset Management Association or uh, Swiss Insurance Association as well. This is the way uh, we try to bring the know-how from our members into the market and foster a dialogue, uh, a thing that is definitely still needed to get sustainable finance into the mainstream. Thank you. Great. Okay, well, that's eight initiatives each of which identified at least three things that they're, they're doing or other initiatives within their jurisdictions that are doing stuff in this space. A huge amount going on. Um, we have, and a, and a few jurisdictions that weren't here, couldn't be here, that sent their apologies. Paris, in particular, couldn't, couldn't make it today. So just, I'm, I'm just very impressed with how much is going on. I've got one quick question, because the, the origins of the different initiatives is, 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 seems to be quite different. So I kind of want to gauge you know, to what extent your more private, your kind of origins are more private sector versus public sector. So if, you, if you're more kind of government kind of origins and run, put your hand up. Come on, so is that three? Okay. And private, a mix. Okay, well, right. <laughs> that's interesting. Um, and then the other question I had before opening up was, um, you know, what do you think, just very quickly, you know, what do you think of the, the sort of the pre-competitive pre things that you can focus in on and collaborate on? Are there sort of ideas that you have that come to mind immediately, things that you're like, okay, well, we should definitely just be collaborating on this? Uh, for, for me... This is, this is for everyone, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for me, uh, it would be uh, engagement with regulators. So okay. if we manage to engage... Uh, as a coalition of financial centers with IOSCO, for example, on uh, the implementation of disclosure regulation or um, other financial regulations, it would be really powerful. Any others? Yeah. I think standards, really. And I mean, any work is going on with regard to creating standards, what is green, and you know, we've been through all the arguments, I'm sure. But I think there's still a push to make sure that we are clear about what the standards are and um, you know, it sort of goes partly with the regulatory side as well, but I think that would give a boost to and confidence to the, uh, to the system. Yeah, it's been. I think education is a field that is pretty competitive, and I think at a lot of universities we still uh, don't see enough sustainable finance courses. 
I think we can learn from each other in this field. Absolutely. And also yeah. use offerings that are available in different countries. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, much of the, <coughs> much of the issues I'd, I'd, I'd uh, support. I'd like to issue a word of caution uh, about the <coughs> discussion with regulators because my, my experience is that, you know, when you know, having someone else to talk to a regulator on behalf of yourself, the, 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 the commercial banks tend not to be all very easy about you know, having others talk to the regulator, but, but that's, that's certainly an issue where coordination will help and, there will, and, and this is why banks want to exchange. Um, I, I would also think that in the area of, um, of having sort of joint <coughs> ideas about what to communicate, to communicate some of the challenges might be a function because the, the, the image of the financial sector hasn't been the best over the recent years, you know, since the financial crisis, there's still some, you know, and that area, that topic is, you know, also a topic where you could make up some ground if you want mm -hmm. and, and communicating some of the true challenges in a, in a, in a, in a sensible and responsible way could also probably be something that, that makes sense. Yep. I just think two things. One, we have to focus on the real economy. Where, where's the capital going at the end of the day? And I think sometimes, you know, I've come from a technology policy background, and sometimes I'm, I'm in meetings and just things are going over my head and different mechanisms and structures and so on around finance. And so the dialogue or the communication gets lost that at the end of the day, this is about jobs in a local village, in a local factory, whatever that may be, I put energy efficiency measures into my, my big factory. Where am I getting the capital from? Show me how I get the capital, make it easy for me. The banks have to have the skill sets and the policy makers have to put the enabling environment in place. So we're part of a jigsaw. And I think what I liked about the H leg that came out recently was that kind of linkage of, of, of that jigsaw and where is capital going to. And then the second point is we also have to recognize and what's terrific about on this panel and obviously finance for tomorrow in Paris as well, is that not all European finance hubs are as far along or starting or wherever we may be on this journey yet. And so Europe in itself, I can just focus on Europe, needs to unlock X trillions. And so we need to begin to work with other hubs in other countries that perhaps only have a domestic focus, not international like London or, or Lux or Frankfurt. And so one of the things we're doing with Climate Kick and we got this approved uh, only found out the other day is we are looking at capacity building for the other hubs, around 20 of them within Europe to try and get them to embed sustainable finance. And so what this group can do is actually share lessons in a way which is still very quickly into those different hubs. Say, this is what we did, this is where it went wrong, this is why Stephen became bold, because I wasn't able to get it the way they wanted to. This is why London did this, why Frankfurt did it. Grab all that together in a way that actually isn't you know, too competitive right now because it's public information, and share with other hubs, and that would be quite a great European, great European project uh, to do as, as a collective. Yeah, and internationally, of course, and that's part of the reason for this UNEP yeah. network. Yeah. Well, actually, part, this, this is part of the UN network. This, right. is, okay. this is the European chapter saying, right, gotcha. we're actually going to do something solid as part of that. Yeah. And before that horizon, I think we should bundle our expertise because we have so many different platforms. Uh, we'll be talking about sustainable uh, finance within the sustainable stock exchange of the United Nations, uh, the financial center idea, uh, our own initiatives. And sometimes I fear that we are losing kind of speed when we discuss the topic in so many different um, uh, on so many different platforms without having an eye on, like you said, what, what is my partner doing in Ireland or in, in Luxembourg? And I think it's important that we are staying on the same page and uh, getting our initiatives as, as consolidated uh, as possible. Great, so we've got time for a couple of questions or, or interventions, points you might want to make to this group and on this, this topic. Does anyone want to come in? Bright ideas, feedback, <laughs> nothing. Come on, guys. All right. Oh, there we go. Somebody back. How often are you going to meet in the future in this format? The next gig's in April, right? We're all yeah. on the land. Yeah. Yes. So the, the, there will be a, a overlaps, I think, of yeah. uh, uh, of meetings. So yeah. as far as the uh, the UNEP network, uh, the, uh, the next meet is in April in Milan, and mm. probably this, this, this network as well will, yep. uh, will meet quite often. I think uh, it's not so much what the meeting, but the action plan. So 
uh, what we've the, the, the network already met in Casablanca in September, and since then there's been work to define the priorities and to um, also identify leadership. So the idea is that probably there will be uh, one center leading on, on, on a specific initiative and the other, contribute, uh, other centers contributing. So uh, the key is the action plan, not so much the, uh, the meetings. And it'll be interesting, you know, and we can come back in a, in a year or two and actually see who has been delivering, living up to the hype, right? Yeah. I mean, and we can, you know, we can nudge, nudge people who aren't doing enough. Any other points or questions? Yeah. Jessica first and then the lady. Um, so I think one of the interesting things that has come through quite a lot of the discussions is that need for collaboration. And I think a few of you touched on examples where absolutely there will only be change if it is global and, and therefore coordination and collaboration is key. One of the other things that we certainly see is then obviously competition. So I'd be interested in your perspectives around actually is there an element where you see competition with one another either positive or negative, because I think there's, there's both sides, that either might be driving progress amongst different European capitals on this agenda in a positive way, or else where you feel that some of that competitive tension might set things back. Great question. I'm going to take the other question as well at some time. Um, Clara Kaminski from the Austrian Environmental Agency. Uh, we don't have a hub like this in Austria yet, and how would it be possible for our decision makers in the governments to address some of you to, um, you know, find out how you did it, or is there going to be some way for countries that don't have it yet to join? Um, how is this going to be organized by this uh, partnership? Okay, so um, two really important questions. So I think f let's let's end on the on the, the, the second question, but begin on the competition question. So, who wants to go first? So, so, this is a very general answer, but I think yeah. since it's, we, we, the, I mean, the, everyone is, uh, knows that, that at the moment the, the sustainable assets or the, the green bonds or the sustainable funds, all of this is relatively small compared to the overall market. So I think competition in and of itself cannot be a bad thing in the sense that it, we, we create more product in the end and encourage uh, uh, in initiatives. So I think overall it's not a bad thing. Um, so I think this, this is a very diplomatic answer. <laughs> yeah, for, for me, uh, the, uh, the key is uh, the kind of regulatory environment that you create through, through your influence. And so building on uh, on Alison's point on standards. So where, for example, I at the European level, if, if, when you have a directive, then it is implemented, it is transposed in different ways acro across different jurisdictions. And you see that uh, depending on how uh, restrictive or permissive uh, the implementation is, you create immediately a competition across the centers. So uh, for this reason, it is so important to engage with regulators because in this way, you create a level playing field where there, there are the same framework conditions and the competition can be about the quality of the projects, uh, the, the quality of the investment decisions that are made, but not uh, driven by tax issues or uh, other framework conditions. So I think there's room for, to, to take this uh, noise out of, of the competition between financial centers. Mm -hmm. So Alison, did you want to come in? No. Not particularly other than I think, you know, competition's healthy, we all thrive on it, we've all got to be grown up and accept it's there, and we do all really have slightly different offerings, and where we overlap, then it, it's, it's, you know, we just have to live with the real world, I think. Yeah, and Luca and then Stephen. Good. Yeah, I just wanted to, I, I agree with that, I just wanted to reiterate, reiterate maybe what I, what I said in my intervention before, which I think that the space right now is really quite big in itself. I mean, if you're looking about sustainable finance or whatever, the asset, you know, green bonds compared to normal bonds, I mean, we, you don't need to compete, right? I mean, the, the space, it's, it's about unlocking that space. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that sense, you know, centers are li like us, of course, might compete in terms of leadership about, you know, who gets the pride of having unlocked one or the other. I don't, personally, I don't feel it like that. I would much rather collaborate, get that sorted, and then, and then you know, there's, for, I think, for some years, quite a bit of space to everybody have a 
big cake, <laughs> and then we might get into competition rhymes, but you know, I, I will be happy to get there. I, I think uh, if I look at, say, what we're doing on our green finance piece, so one obviously is the International Financial <coughs> Services Centre, and yes, we're going to be competing, so let's just call it what it is, right? Uh, and it's great to be agents. Alice said competition is good, and the more competition, it shows the, the healthiness of the marketplace. But the second piece that we look at is how do we mobilise capital, both domestic and international, to invest in Ireland's national decarbonisation efforts, which is around 120 billion. So I so said the state has done their bit, our sovereign wealth funds doing their bit. So we have a second part, Action 13 of our national mitigation plan, saying how do we get out there, and we're we were playing a role in that. So one of the things that we're doing with the City of London Green Finance Initiative is. And we announced that at an Irish Embassy dinner in London here last year with 100 people, saying that we're going to host a joint event with the guys this year here in London, saying, OK, you've got the finance screen, you've got ourselves in Ireland. How can we collaborate to create the right conditions to unlock capital to fund the decarbonisation of the British Isles <coughs> in its entirety? And that's something when you look that came about through in international financial services, can we have a chat? And then when we got talking about it, we said, you know, there's a lot of UK capital it's coming into Ireland right now because of expertise and so on, and that capital is working in Ireland and going abroad. There's a lot of Irish capital and expertise coming into the UK. So whatever may happen in the future, we're still the closest neighbours. So on the international financial services, yes, at a domestic level, how can we unlock that capital? Because we're too small as a country. We don't have that capital in its entirety, so we have to work with bigger partners. And that's something which is really positive. That's about jobs. That's about the real economy. Okay. Quickly. Yeah, just the last comment. I'm with my colleagues that uh, we're far from having it mainstream, so I don't think competition is the major problem right now. And especially on the side of the asset owners that also drive this development, there is no real competition between pension funds in different countries. There we can just really learn from each other and uh, use the role models that are there to also start the development in other countries. And all of you wanted to come in. Yeah. Yeah, perhaps there's too much of an economics <coughs> uh, economist answer, but competition can happen on yeah. many levels. You know, there's different projects which compete, you know, and then there's banks who compete to finance, who can compete to finance the better project, and then there's financial centers who are competing. And frankly, you know, for us it's probably helpful that the, you know I, I don't like the fact that Germany wasn't the first one to have initiatives, <laughs> in our but you know, it probably helped that there were initiatives in other. And now you've now got two. In other, so, yeah. yeah, now we're <laughs> you're going to be more in the future, perhaps. No. Uh, kidding, but but that is that is so competition on that level is you know also into the Austrian direction. That's probably helpful, you know, and and that, and that point it was you know it can be used constructively. Now when we're when and when we're providing sort of public goods, something that is you know of, of general use of general help to to the society basically, you know, then you know probably it's a good idea to you know maximize output by collaboration. So when what you said, you know, let's consolidate the number a little bit. That probably makes sense. But the, the tricky role of the government here is, and now coming back to the question, you know, when talking to financial institutions, how to you know do you know hit the thin line between you know helpful competition and, and cooperation. You know, the idea of the government, the, the role of the government is typically to try to so set the rules such that the competition is constructive and you know and that's also in being very concrete for the regulation what's you know what might be a good idea is to set some regulation on how things have to report it you know there will be discussion there probably will be coordination among the institutions but on top of that the individual institutions will think about how can we use the information that's provided in a way you know that we do not want to share with everyone but when uh, how can we use the information that's provided in a way that can provide us a competitive edge and you know getting that going i think that's the brilliant yeah, task uh, uh, and i think the you know part of the whole point of this partnership is about is it is about competition as well as collaboration it's about <coughs> making sure that we're all fighting to be the best um, because by fighting to be the best we can then change the world and deliver on paris and the sdgs right um, but there are clearly some bits of the system where you know, there is no competition, and your points have been about asset owners across jurisdictions, a fantastic one. Um, and then in terms of the, the uh, you know, this group here will hopefully be, and hopefully there'll be others um, in it, will be the sort of, you know, the Premier League or pick your sport, you know, hopefully the best, constantly breaking records, constantly outperforming and doing, and doing more and doing it better. Um, and then, you know, the question of how do we support um, other other actors in this space and bring them up and I think that's about sort of defining best practice and then and then helping others use it and adopt it now 
clearly capacity building is an area that could be very helpful for that. So. And also onto that, there are just so many ways of creating a, a green financial centre. So we've, you've seen the diversity that uh, even if there's no government backing in, in a country, it can, you, there can still be uh, a sustainable finance initiative. And, and so uh, there are no strict parameters mm -hmm. to join and, and think yeah. this is, is, I is important. I think one important step could be a kind of stakeholder analysis in your mm -hmm. own financial center or in your own market because the needs and interests are different from center to center and from market to market. That is why we see here this kind of heterogene uh, situation between green, sustainable, um, how the initi initiatives and projects are built up, etc. And the question is, what are your stakeholders interested in and how do their needs look like? Because in the end, an initiative is success successful when it answers questions and when it gives guidance etc. And that always depends on the individual um, situation in the market or in the financial center. And based on that stakeholder analysis, it's easier to get the government on board because then you have a kind of idea what you are talking about. You can say, okay, we are lacking transparency in the field of ESG. We are lacking um, sustainable products or services in that way or kind of um, institutionalized dialogue uh, how our financial center should look like in five or ten years or whatever. And with this concrete list of needs and interests, you get the government uh, on board. That's um, our experience in Germany, I think. Okay, we are now out of time, I'm afraid, but a good point at which to end. So join me in thanking the panel. So just thank you. Do it offline. <laughs>